So for remote access to data. I guess I can start with a personal story here if you want to hear. So this was long ago, maybe five years, let's say. Someone was coming to one of our help sessions and needed to use the cluster. And they had a file on their computer they needed to copy. And it was their own computer. So in order to copy it, I had to start explaining, OK, first you need to copy this to the Kosh login server. And then from there, you have to copy it to Triton. And since their laptop was, I guess it was Windows, they needed to use one program to do the first copy and a different program to do the second copy. And basically, there were all these different things. And, it, and by the end of that, I just was just feeling embarrassed that our system was so difficult to use. So why is that? Well, because copying data around is a big deal and needs to happen often. So luckily, now almost everything you see on this page is new since then. So we've done, we made a lot of improvements of the way things uh, can be copied back and forth. But really don't suffer doing your data copying a bad way. So um, take a little bit of time, read through what's here, try to set things up so you feel comfortable doing it. Or on the other hand, do everything on the cluster so you don't need to copy things back and forth. So that's another case that many people end up doing. Yeah, like I, so. I would give an example, like I, I previously did something myself and I transferred a lot of data from the cluster to my own laptop to do some plotting. And then I realized that, okay, actually I don't need the data. I just need the plots. Mm -hmm. So I'm, mm -hmm. I wrote the script so that it can do the plotting without showing the plot in the cluster. And then I just copy the plots or, mm -hmm. or just view the plots. So yeah. if you think about when you're copying data back and forwards, like it's a good idea to like think about what, what you're actually needing. Uh, what, what is the actual thing you need to do? And, and often the situation is that you maybe when you, let's say doing plotting or analyzing the results, you only need like, let's say you do, uh, do a physics simulation, you may need a time series of how some values behaved, like how, how the system behaved. And if mm -hmm. you can do that calculation on the system itself, like in the HPC system, you can just copy that, like let's say CSV yeah. file of, of time series and here's time and here's a, here's a temperature or something like that. And then you can plot it on your laptop and it mm -hmm. will, the copying will be really easy and, and fast. But if you constantly have to copy like hundreds of gigabytes of data to your laptop, just to visualize them or something like that, you might think that, okay, maybe this, maybe there's a better way. Like, mm -hmm. and, and having this kind of like a, a distinction, like uh, it might help you in the long run. Yeah. Uh, but there's there's many different copying clients, many different ways of copying. Unfortunately, there's no one good way. Uh, yeah. But maybe there's... here under history and background, I tried to recently categorize categorize things into two styles. One is transferring data, where you make a separate copy of the file somewhere else. So now the same data exists in two places. This is generally efficient for large data or when you need an actual copy. The other option is remote mounting. And this basically means you make a view of data on another computer. So for example, on my own computer, I can use something called SSHFS or SMB to mount, which is the terms used here. We mount the directory from Triton on my own computer. And then on my own computer, I can CD to the directory, open the files, view it in an image viewer, that kind of stuff, without making a duplicate. And this is great because when I update it on Triton, I automatically see the new version on my own computer. And this saves a lot of time and a lot of frustration. The disadvantage is this is not great for big data because every time you open the file, it has to transfer the whole thing across. But when it's small, like images, yeah, whatever, or if it's being modified in both places at the same time, it can end up being corrupt and in some inconsistent state. And you really want to avoid doing that. 
basically by making sure you're only modifying it on one place at a time and you save it on all other sides before you do that. But these are not too hard to handle if you think about it. So with that being said, uh, what's here? What's in this section? First is data availability throughout Alto. So basically, we already have the data mounted on other computers at Alto. So for example, if you're using VDI, the virtual desktop interface, the data from Triton is already there. It's already mounted there. So you can just go and immediately open it and see it like however you would like. Remember that mounted in this case means that it's the view of the data. The data is actually in a, in a, in a server in, a, in the Triton hall. And in order mm -hmm. to, like, if you, let's say you want to uh, read a 10 gigabyte file, it has to transfer all the way from Triton to mm -hmm. the VDI machine. So it will like be a lot slower because there's lots of networking. Like yeah. it has to go through a lot of pipes. Yeah. And it's available on other things around Alto, in particular, the physical workstations in the departments, which is great for quickly doing things. Then you can mount things remotely onto your own computer using several different strategies here, which I guess maybe we don't need to, um, we don't need to go into the details now. You can do this as homework. What do you think about that? Any particular comments? And this works on all operating systems. So um, there's no, um, yeah. But you have to be inside of the Alto VPN to do this. OK, any comments, Simo? No, I think it's, uh, it's good. Yeah. And there's more examples of doing this here. Mm. And then transferring data, there is different things. You can do it from the command line using SFTP. And I, I'd also mention uh, oh, maybe awesome. uh, like, like whenever you're, it's a good idea probably also to differentiate between let's say code and data. Like, like code is something I personally use Git for everything, transferring text files. Like if I, if I have something that I code, I, I make like on my laptop, I, I develop some code. I make a Git push to some, uh, mm. Git server, like mm -hmm. version Alto FI or GitHub. And then I do a Git pull on the, uh, on the Triton side so that the code is in sync. I don't simply like copy the files across like you know, a folder because that makes it so that like I have the version control handles all of the copying and I know that stuff is under version control so they won't break mm -hmm. and uh, and like especially if I if it's a, like a project I'm working on uh, so because these kinds of small files we're talking about order of megabytes of data so uh, if for these small files that are very important because they're code there there's lots of effort lots of actual thought by you is meant or used to create these files. They are really important. So it's important to have them under backup and that's why the version control is great. And it's easy to transfer mm -hmm. with the version control and mm -hmm. easy to make certain that they are in sync in different systems. Uh, so that's a good idea to do. And when we're talking about data, then we are talk, let's say, uh, like like if results or uh, outputs or inputs of these kinds of simulations that might be a lot bigger and that might be harder to uh, keep under version control because it's mm -hmm. it's binary data so usually like for this kind of data i would yeah. prefer using version control instead of like copying because that makes it much e much easier to to manage yeah. Okay, so let's see. And there's different ways to transfer and some exercises if you wanted to try.